Okay. So um, I just want to kind of recap where we are uh, with regards to your discussion um, so far. We were supposed to have this lecture on MLE and the folklore back in the sixth week, but we couldn't because of um, certain circumstances. So, uh, so thankfully, we've had it now. Uh, we are in week nine. So we've had that discussion. Uh, so today's session, we are supposed to continue with uh, Tantuan Ng's The Garden of Evening Mist. Um, and for that, um, I am uh, I am checking against your I'm checking against your e-task. Um, the specific e-task for that is uh, week five, e, sorry, uh, e-task five on MLE and multiculturalism. So, so far, um, Aimi, uh, Ruby, Shah and Salim have submitted and uh, Elia and Lisa, uh, it's pending. So, um, I would like to kind of go through the task just to kind of get us on, on par with the schedule, the kind of issue. But before that, I also want to draw your attention to the other e-task. So um, Lisa and Salim, if you've got the e-task, and you, sorry, sorry, not Salim, Elia and Lisa, if you want to upload your e-task 5, if you've got it now, please do so, upload. Um, before we get into that, um, I'm concerned about e-task 4. No one has um, has done this task. So I'm just wondering what's going on. Is it because it's difficult? You don't know what the task is asking you to do? What's going on? Uh, for I, I, me, sorry, Ruby. <laughs> no, I just, I have not done it because uh, I was doing the other ones first. But I'm definitely going to do it after this. Uh, mm. uh, I think we were trying to, yeah, process what... Uh, Prof, uh, and I, I, I do want to read uh, Ustazah Inaya because I have not read that. Uh, I remember reading Cempeda and and Maria. So I think it's it's a, um, I think I'm more interested in in discussing uh, Ustazah Inaya. So I have to read that one first and then continue with this one. And for the other itas is, uh, yeah, I waited for today's class for Sitenggang Homecoming and then. Yeah, and I'll do it. No, <laughs> so, but, but which one? This, day, right? oh, oh, okay. Uh, the folklore of the yeah. land. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, sorry. This one. Yeah, that one is also pending. So, two e-tasks um, which are pending. E-task four and um, e-task three. Um, uh, doctor, I have a question for e-task four because um, my... Um, the video assignment that I did on for your class, uh, I touched on gender. So I was wondering if I could touch that also in the ETAS 4, which means bring elements that I've gotten from the video assignment a little bit into the ETAS. Would that can, be a Can, can. Okay. Because, um, you see, every, uh, every assignment helps you hone in on your area of interest. You know, some of you may be interested in a particular area like gender and you you might find that every assignment, uh, you is key assignments, you skew your discussion to that aspect that you are interested in, be it gender or any other aspect. That's fine, you know, because like I said, at the graduate level, what we're trying to do is to give you enough space, enough of a platform for you to say, this is what I'm interested in and I want to pursue this. I want to kind of explore this area some more. So, so that's fine. Uh, but also keep in mind, um, back to what uh, Shah was saying, uh, you know, you want to work on uh, Ustaza Inaya. Uh, keep in mind that uh, the e-task is, the e-task is a total of 20%. You know, and you have five e tasks. So you do the math. Each one carries like four marks, right? So I'm not expecting extensive amount of work, right? But if you are able to come up with a kind of a, a short paragraph plus a thesis statement, 
That short paragraph plus a thesis statement may later help you if you're working on a project, if you want to write a paper, uh, or if you want to explore this as a as your final, um, you know, MA thesis. These short paragraph with a thesis statement that you do for the E task will later be used for something else if you're interested in. Right. So I'm not expecting a full scale analysis. That will be 20 marks on its own. This is just a four mark assignment. So it's just, you know, maximum about a page, half a page to a page maximum. So what exactly can you write? So it's, it's almost like an abstract, if you like, right? Or just some general ideas or thoughts generally with a thesis statement. Um, you may include one example of analysis. Again, all this is to illustrate the learning outcome, right? This is all to illustrate, this is how I capture the learning outcome for this particular course. This is how I show the link between the issues and concerns with textual representation and context, okay? And this is also how I show I apply the theoretical knowledge to the discussion of the corpus, i.e. Malaysian literature in English. So just keep constantly keep that at the back of the mind, because at the end of the day, what I want you to see for yourself is the kind of learning that you have um, done or, or uh, successfully uh, completed in this particular course. Right. So it's a four mark task you shouldn't be spending hours on it. I'm just saying to you a maximum about an hour plus, that's it. Nothing more than that, right? Compared to a video assignment where you spend about a week or so or for your final project where you spend um, a few weeks, right? So if you look at the schedule, the final project will give you around four weeks plus to prepare and that is 40 marks. that is 40 marks okay so have that kind of um, way to manage your your workload and your um, the amount of time you know student learning time that you spend on your assignments or and your task okay so please do finish the gender and the folklore by next week um, if you can, upload it, because once you're done with that, then it's just a matter of working on your final project, okay? Until you get that done, um, that would be looming over your head and you don't want that. And uh, for the e-task 2, um, uh, Salim, have you uploaded this or are you are you in the midst of uploading it? Please let me know what's going on because... I have uploaded the first one, doctor. This is not the video essay. No, the uh, the task. I mean, yeah, because it's I will not check there. It again, doctor. Sorry, I will please, check it, doctor. Please check. Again. Please do check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, because I, I I'm sure that I made it, but I'm not sure whether whether uh, it's it has been uploaded or not. Sometimes I face problem, doctor, in Iraq uh, for okay. uploading. I don't right. know why, doctor. Thank you. E task one. Um, I mean, yours has not been uploaded. Please uh, check on that as well. All right, doctor. It has one, it has two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're on track. Okay, um, uh, for today's class, so, you know, um, like I said, what we're looking at today is um, Tantuan Ng's The Garden of Evening Mist. So without further ado, I just want to go into your e-task five. Um, uh, Lisa and uh, Elia, um, are you able to uh, give us some thoughts or have you prepared something or have you not done anything yet? Um, I've, I've done mine, but I haven't submitted it. Okay, thank yeah. you. Lisa? Uh, yes, yeah, same. Because we had our guest lecture today, I thought that we'd be speaking some more before like I come into a conclusion of okay. what I had in mind. But nothing's changed much, so I'll probably submit it soon. Okay, yeah. so I, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go into the e-task. So I, I just want to kind of, you don't have to say anything new, but you know, what I want you to do is when I, when I um, you know, highlight your work, 
tell us what you want to focus on or what are some of the issues that you want to draw your, our attention to. So I'm going to start with the list that we have here. Um, I'm going to start with um, Aimee's work. Go Aimee, go Aimee. How do I make this? Um, can I make this? A, oh, here. Yes. Okay. Sorry, there was a cheer for Aimi there. Yes, go, go, Aimi. Oh, okay. So, um, based on my reading, what I think Tan Tuan Eng actually uh, really captures the aspect of Malaysia is the multiculturalism because I kind of like reading it side by side with um K S Maniam the written. So, uh, I can't help but think that um Tan Tuan Eng's uh, work is more multicultural instead of um K S Maniam the written, where it is more to the plural society in Malaysia. So um, in this um, ITAS, I kind of relate how the multiculturalism is represented um, in Tan Tuan Eng. First is through the characters. You have Yun Ling, the Chi uh, um, a Chinese lady, and then there's Emily. But there's also other characters that we assume as um, quote-unquote foreigners or those who are not typically um, viewed as Malaysian. So what I say in here is um, they, uh, this actually reflected in our current, current representation of Malaysia where we do not only have like the Malaysians in our country but we also have people that are not Malaysians who find the sense of belonging in Malaysia as well. So um, to and these people uh, portray as portrayed in Tan Tuan Eng, we do not only see them in like marketplaces, like what um, KS Maniam did in the written, but we also see them um, interacting in the two day basis. And then we also have, um, I think the most interesting character for me is actually Vimalaya, uh, Vimalaya Chin, where she is actually a mixture or a product of hybridity between um, the Chinese community and also the Indian community, which also for me and uh, highlights the multi multiculturalism in uh, this story. Also bringing um, it a step further, which is the representation of the food, where a Chinese lady, Emily, cook food that um, does not belong only to her culture, but to other cultures as well. So for me, that is the interaction between the cultures and how it is how multiculturalism is presented in Tantua and the Garden of Evening Mist. So basically, that's what my ITAS is about. And it ties ties up very well with what Dr. Anita was talking about earlier about you know cultural recreation, cultural um, appropriation. So there's the element of celebrating diversity in this book. For instance, you know as you have said, uh, Emily is is a um, Peranakan you know descent, uh, and and she cooks um, uh, she cooks something that is not necessarily pure Chinese or or you know, pure a particular community, but she she brings in something from a traditional Malay uh, um, um, cuisine and appropriate, not appropriate, but rather incorporates it into her own uh, delicacies. You know, so so I think that kind of connects it as well with what uh, Dr. Anita spoke about. All right, thank you very much um, for that. Am I missing something? Okay. Next is um, Ruby. Yeah. Just a second. Mm. Okay. How do I, I have to download first, lah? Huh? Yeah, I think so. I can't. How come I can make it for? Uh, but to be honest, I can see the font quite well. I'm sure you yeah. okay, right. fine. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, so I'm. Uh, so my my ethos is mainly about trauma. Uh, specifically unspoken trauma. Uh, I think uh, based on what I've read and also based on the subjects that I've taken this semester, other subjects. There's a lot of things I've learned about the unsaid, doctor. Uh, you know, what is unsaid? And there's a lot of things between the lines in the story. So I found this notion of um, trauma to be very much present, even though uh, I think the first 100 pages, we didn't know what happened to the sister or we didn't know what happened to her. 
uh, but it was that suspense. It was that, but, but then maybe because we, uh, I link it back to what I know as a child. So that became, I knew that rape was inevitably will, you know, would be mentioned. So that was a little, very traumatizing to wait for that to happen. Mm. Uh, so yes, and then uh, uh, the writer juxtaposed it with um, the heroine, not comfortable talking about it. And I believe that uh, the trauma is collective in society because it's not just her, it's also other um, characters as well. Uh, but then I don't understand why other characters l- like to ask her about it. So what happened? So what happened? I guess that says a lot about Malaysian culture. Mm. We know that it's uncomfortable, but we ask them about it anyway. Mm. Uh, yeah, and then I went more specifically about sexual violence because you know I wanted to mention um, gender because I think it was very... Uh, prominently featured in the book. I didn't know if Tan Tuan Eng meant for it to be viewed that way. But yes, the issue of comfort uh, women. Uh, and then, uh, uh, so I, I tried to link it with what I know uh, when I was younger, how Malay girls were asked to run to the forest. And some of them, uh, my great, you know, my grand, uh, great aunt and whatnot, they had to, how to say, melumurkan arang. They have to like cover their faces with dust uh, and coal to make them look more unappealing to the Japanese soldiers. Uh, so I find my pieces of history um, uh, in the book. So I find that very beautiful indeed. Of course, it's a very negative part of history, mm, mm. but I feel like it needs to be confronted, it needs to be acknowledged, it needs mm. to be um, talked about. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so this unsaid history that people know about, so I find that to be a very fascinating um, aspect of uh, Asian literature in general. If, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so that's that's my the main thought I had reading the book. All right, thank you. Uh, next. Now I feel like my itas is super simplified <laughs> after Ruby's <laughs> and <laughs> Irene's presentation. Uh, but but um this is beautiful uh, okay you get it you know this is very detailed yeah okay so <laughs> but, but um, how, how does how does uh Tan Tuan Ng captures aspects of malaysia okay. uh, what, what is okay, your first of show? all first of all actually i really like the the garden as a character in itself mm-hmm. um i i don't know um how to explain this further but okay i'll try uh we also have okay we we may not have the same uh, aspect of, you know, Japanese garden in, in Malaysia, but we do have, I think, in Kelantan, I remember we, we have uh, like Taman Tengku Anis, right, R- Ruby? Right, we have that, right? <laughs> I, I also forgot, but... I truly but, don't um, know, but yeah. Yeah, and, and also there's... this. I, I'm kind of reminded, kind of reminded me of this... Um, oh my God, I'm... I'm not remembering any of it. Okay, but the... Okay, let's just see what I write lah. So, <laughs> um, reading this, uh, I... I Because I read this with Yang Zhu Chu as well, so 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 a lot of la, la... The suffix, right? I just know that it's a suffix. 27 years old of living. It's a suffix. And, and um, actually, if I talk to like my mom's friend she, she's a she, she's british i also uh you know incorporate the word la without me you know realizing it but she understands it because it's been you know it's been a thing when she comes here and she also you know kind of speak like that as well so I, I i incorporate la and also uh the word the malay words that's that's in the novel as well mm-hmm. um we use we use matamata right because uh, I incorporate matamata because um, my grandfather is uh, my grandfather was a policeman so in my mom's uh, uh, in my mom's um, certificate uh, birth mm. certificate the the father occupation is as matamata so I'm mm. like oh <laughs> so uh, I actually saw you know the occupation as matamata so that was just my experience of you know. Uh, with the with the word matamata la and then you know ayah and choy, uh, I think that's very Malaysian. Um, because uh, I work with commonly Chinese uh, in my in my in my office, and then 
Uh, yeah, I actually told you guys, I think, last week that I was very frustrated that this place is actually fictional in Tanah Rata. So, uh, I incorporate places, <laughs> uh, incorporate places of uh, Mal- uh, states of Malaysia that's been men- mentioned. Like a doctor said about the market, right, doctor, in Penang. I haven't been there, you know, but, but I do want to go there now. I don't know why I'm all giddy, but that's that for my <laughs> um, itas. Thank you. Sorry for taking so much time. But, but they built a Japanese garden somewhere in Genting Highland or something. But I don't think it's related oh. to the novel, to be honest. But I think there's a Japanese yeah. garden somewhere. Oh, really? That there is a very beautiful garden in Genting, if I'm not mistaken. Is it Genting? Oh, yes, I think that is the one. I think that is the one. But I don't think it's a capitalist thing. Yeah. But but yeah, yes. so so the idea. But I think it's worth exploring if you are interested. Um, how far mm. is garden uh, or or you know having gardens an aspect of either Malaysian culture or particularly Malay culture? You know because agriculturally, um, uh, the people are rooted to the land. But unlike um, you know, maybe the British, they love to have their own gardens, right? They, they love gardening. That's part of their, their culture also. And also Europe, you know, um, when, when um, King Louis, he will have his, his own gardeners, you know, uh, of France, he, he would kind of create that kind of, of um, a legacy for himself, right? So this idea of gardening as part of the, um, the, the symbol of the monarch, you know, you've got the Japanese, uh, you've got the the uh, French. So, do we have something equivalent? So, it, it's worth exploring uh, if doctor, you are interested. Sorry, I, I will get back to you about the garden that I mentioned just now because I don't remember particularly, but we have it in Kelantan. That was yeah. that was an, an ancient place. Oh, I cannot remember. I'm so frustrated. But well, I'll get back to you. Sure, because this sentence is it's the first sentence kind of um, there's a gap between what you're saying in the first sentence and in the second in the rest of the paragraph. So if you want to kind of explore that a little bit, like I said, again, these e task they're more for you rather than for me or, or, or depth the mail. Just a second. Yeah, uh, as I was saying, uh, these e-tasks, you know, they are more for you um, for later when you want to kind of come back to the e-task and show uh, some of the work that you have done and maybe see how you can uh, further improve on it, you know, for your own um, uh, work, for your own um, uh, scholarship. You can always come back to that. So please do take a little bit more time to work on it a little bit so that your final version of this four mark e task really captures how you have understood the issue currently so that later if you want to explore this further you you take it to the next level all right so thank you so much yeah, doctor doctor yes. i found it it's taman serendah sekebun bunga it's it's um you said uh, really? City one kembang? Yeah, that is a yeah. Oh, I thought you said you went there. I got yeah. shocked that you went there because obviously it means something else. Like. I, I, I didn't go yeah. there, but it, it exists. Yeah. So right. does it uh, does was, it exist? Yeah, uh, is, is it still there? Yeah, yeah we, we have. But it's <laughs> Wait, not are maintained, you sure? So so I don't know. It's not maintained, so it's not. The it's not meant for a reason, Sha, because because the place is known to be very keras. How to say keras? Oh. In yeah, keras. it's like yeah, it's, it. yeah right. because it's just yeah. the one kumbang that. I, that yeah, I don't think anybody did to. But like, it is fascinating to 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 you know compare it to. I'm not sure if we should compare. But I'm I think we sure can. Itself, I think um, yeah. uh, garden has this very um, uh, because royal princesses were not allowed to leave the palace. They yes. they only had the garden. Yeah. Okay, so thank you for that. Uh, we'll just resume. Who else? Uh, Salim. Okay, doctor. Just to remind you, doctor, I have uploaded the first assignment, uh, the first uh, Utah school, and I uploaded uh, f- for the second time again, doctor. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, just, uh, yes, this is. May I start, doctor? 
Yes. Okay. This is enough. Okay. 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 Am I sharing screen? Okay. Yeah. Yes, you are. Uh, doctor. Doctor. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yes. Uh, go ahead, Salim. Okay. Uh, so uh, the, uh, at the beginning, I uh, I shed lights on the. Uh, Malaysian situation, what I captured from this uh, novel is the Malaysian writer Tan Tuan Eng uh, shed lights on the Malaysian situation during Japanese occupation to Malay in 1941. Tan Tuan is second novel in English, The Garden of Evening Mist, uh, deal with the life of Malaysian people during the occupation period. The novel in general captured the role of memory in the human being existence and also captured the relationship between memory and uh, forget the uh, fullness. The novel starts indicating to the Greek uh, uh, cr chronicler's ideas of the uh, goodness memory, uh, Nemozine, uh, there, there was nothing called forgetfulness at that time, but in spite of that, they are coming together as a twin sisters. The novel present, uh, the, the, this novel present images of, sacrifi of uh, sacrificing for the sake of others, uh, and all examples can be can be seen in, uh, uh, and can be seen in the character of Young Lin character uh, when she uh, stole food for, for the uh, for her sisters and when she was exposed, Young Lin faced problems and uh, severe punishment by the authorities of the camp at that time. Both sisters subjected to varieties of types of bad treatment. Both sisters have been captured and imprisoned by Japanese forces in a civil camp after British emperor forced a pull-off from Malaysia. They uh, left uh, to face their destiny and face bitterness at the hand of Japanese. The writer, despite a real, uh, the, depicted a real image of uh, on the life of uh, prisoners uh, at Japanese hands forces uh, after uh, after occupation pull off they they, they left Malaysia to face their destiny as I told you uh, uh, so and uh, face various kinds of torture sub, uh, suppression and uh, physical liquidation to then specifically uh, uh, young uh, Hong who has been subjected to rape humiliation and all other uh, 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 repression treatment before war they t uh, before war uh, take a place uh, uh, before what took a place in young hang uh, uh, young hong uh, visited tokyo as uh, a visit of kyoto she was uh, uh, she uh, she was de depressed and uh, lived in a, an isolation for many months but when she visited uh, the Tenruji uh, garden, uh, she inf uh, influenced with the Japanese gardens, and uh, she returned back to real uh, uh, to read a, uh, a lot of books about making these gardens. During the occupation, both sisters were captured by Japanese forces and taken to civil camp. At the age of 20, uh, to 20, uh, to 20. To, had the first his had first abortion after Japanese forces withdrew from Malaysia. Then they they they, they, uh, they they killed the whole prisoners and young uh, young Hong was among them. While her sisters succeeded to escape from the camp, leaving her dear dear sister to face her uh, death, who really dead as a result of a uh, huge explosion inside the camp. Uh, Long uh, uh, Young Ling uh, escaped from the camp. Uh, her strong love to her sister, who was inter uh, interested in gardens and plants uh, in general, she decided to build a special garden. Young Ling wanted to immortal immortal her sister. Uh, that's why she looked for uh, uh, looked for uh, uh, something uh, immortalized. Uh, uh, her and uh, she decided to make a garden uh, as a memory for the lovely young sister. Young Ling witnessed many repressive uh, acts of Japanese forces like killing and uh, execution process. The novel uh, in general captured the role of memory in the human being existence and also captured the relationship between memory and uh, forgetfulness. The novel starts indicating to Greek uh, chronolized idea as I, as I have mentioned before and uh, he, here, the idea of goddess memory, uh, 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 there was nothing called, uh, uh, again here, forgetfulness uh, at this time. 
at that time. But in spite of that, there was uh, uh, there was since they they coming together uh, as a two uh, as a two twins. Young Lang represented a clear image of guilty sister who uh, who left her young sister in the camp while she ran away from the suppression action of the two five authorities. Young Lang looked for something immortalize her sister. As a result, she went uh, to ask Arit Arit Aritumo, who was the gardener, escaped uh, from Emperor Talas uh, a long time ago. First, Aritumo refused to uh, her uh, suggests uh, to you. Uh, to, to young uh, uh, young Ling to stay with uh, and then he, he suggests her to stay with uh, with him and gradually she will be familiar with the way of making goddess later young Ling agreed to get her vocational training at the hand of uh, this Japanese man in spite of her bitter experience with them uh, and the sufferings uh, she and her sister received at the end uh, of Japs during the colonial uh, era. According to Ritmo, life could be tough and painful, but in spite of that, we can have peace. Another thing that has been captured from this novel, which is uh, we want to have a, a bright future. We must forget our past and don't uh, feel uh, remorse, uh, sorry for something happened, but we should focus on things make uh, us forget since uh, remembering is not the best uh, thing uh, all the time. The, list, the, the, the lesson that has been uh, transferred from uh, the novel was there is always a space for forgetting. For uh, in addition to all that, uh, all what has been mentioned, there is another uh, thing captured uh, through, this, uh, through, through, uh, through reading this novel in uh, which the novel uh, provided us a good information about the sufferings of Malaysian people during the colonial time and uh, its circumstances. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I appreciate your um, your appraisal of the novel based on your interest, looking at memory and forgetfulness. A couple of mistakes, though, um, Salim. Uh, Yun Hong is the elder sister. Yun Ling is the younger sister. So, uh -huh, Doctor, sorry. Yeah. So please make that correction. Because later, if you come back to this note, uh, if you're interested for further studies in this particular novel, you don't want to have mistakes in the in the fundamental plot and character um, building of the story. Uh, so you mentioned it twice. Uh, so please have that corrected. Yeah. The other thing is, um, Malay is the race. Malaya, spelled M-A-L-A-Y-A, is the land. So Malaya is the land. M A L A Y is the people. M A L A Y A Malaya is the land. So please have okay. this corrected as well. Ma Malaya is the land. Yes. So spelled M -A -L -A with the L E Y. Yes. Yeah. Why right. why Malay? Malay is a people, I mean. It's the people or the race. Yeah. Okay, and so another thing, Doctor, Yong Hong was was younger. You mean older? Older. Yes. Yeah, I got that point, Doctor. Yeah, and she did not suffer from depression because of her visit. Yeah. It was during the occupation that when she felt depressed and all, she she went back in her mind to the the gardens of Kyoto. And they talked yeah. about it, and, and Yun Hong and Yun Ling would talk about it, and they would use that as a form of escapism. You well, know, I'll correct so that this, this part you. is also, um, you know, you need to re rework that. Okay, okay so doctor, I will correct that. Thank you so much, Doctor. Yeah. Okay, all right. Just fine. a question, Doctor. Sorry. Yes, go ahead. Uh, um, a question just, uh, you know, uh, it raises in my mind uh, uh, how, how did she live? Among people, and she worked with the uh, with a person who was against his country. My question, Doctor, to uh, about about uh, Aritomo. How Again, I, I you your voice yeah. is is coming and going, so I I'm not sure whether the others are experiencing the same. Uh, but how did she work? And then I missed you. How did she work with Aritomo? Mm. And at the time, he was against the policy and against. Uh, the the people of her country. No, she no, he wasn't. 
at the time he wasn't. He he worked with the people. He you know he was part of the land. He he came across as if he was uh, being exiled um, because he he you know he was no longer the emperor's gardener, right? Um, and so he managed the land. He had a small plot and he took care of the space and he made that space um, a kind of a mini Japan, right, with its own garden and everything. But that the first part of your question, that's a very good question. How did she manage to work with somebody who represented everything that she hated about Japan? Yeah. Right. That 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 some that was something that also yeah um yeah was was something that hit hit me. Was but so if, difficult, yeah. if you remember from the lecture that I gave last week, one of the things that um uh, Tan Tuan Ing himself uh, said in an interview in two thousand, um one of the things that he likes to focus on is this idea of um you know. A, learning more about people and and how do you do that if you you don't try to um, understand them so let me just share the screen just that that quote uh, if i can um, this part when he said um, i wish to understand and how else can we understand another person if we don't regard him or her as fellow human being every character i write must be alive, must come off the page. And the only way to accomplish that is to see them as people with all their strengths and flaws right from the very beginning. So right from the very beginning, we, the readers, we see Aritomo's misgivings. We see his potential flaws. And so does Yunling, which is why she was very hesitant at first. To, to be his understudy. She she didn't want she, she didn't go into it with open heart and she was she was very resist, resistant, right? And I guess that's the issue that Tan Tuan Ng is trying to make the reader um, uh, feel. You know, and he he brings us through the story, he brings us face to face with that reality. Can we empathize? Aritomo was also subject to the emperor's wishes, right? Just like he was a soldier to the emperor's, uh, in, uh, in, uh, at the command of the emperor, he did whatever was asked of him. Was that a strength? Was that a flaw? You can always argue either way, right? So I like this statement by Tan Tuan Ng to capture his author defined social reality this is what he was trying to do and it's not an easy answer to give because if it was easy then the element of empathy is not is not an issue right but because it's difficult you and i reading it we are also questioning the same thing how how can you link first of all learn from this man and later have a relationship with him live in his Home, have a relationship with him, right? Um, when at first she was so um, repulsed by him, right? He, he, she had that kind of... So, so that element of how do you understand the person, you understand the person by coming face to face with that person, living in that same space and understanding the person for all their strengths and flaws, Right? Uh, not being disillusioned by the person's strength and saying this person has no flaws. No, you know, and and I think he captured it very well in Yun Ling's struggles because she later was also um, uh, called out by her own father when he finds out that she is, uh, number one, living with him and number two, uh, building a Japanese garden with him. Right, it's like the worst kind of crime uh, uh, that the father could think of. So I hope that answers the question. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, Dr. Uh, Dr. Rai, if I could add just a little bit, please. The, please, the, the, the way for, for me, right? How I made sense of it, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, 
Tandonin writes so beautifully and I could feel the pain and I was thinking I could, I don't know if I could do it. I, I mean, to see the face, the voice, everything, oh, I right? Uh, to, I could to, to face, I mean, I know it's not him, but he was a representation of that particular nationality or ethnic group and I could tell myself, I know I, I could not be. So um, for me, I looked at it also as the strength of the human spirit the the ability the resilience in her that you know in spite of the torture that it would be for her to look at his face and listen to his voice and his words and all that but over than that what she wanted for the sister it was that all the way right it was the fact that this was more important to her so it's again the idea of love triumphs over everything right yeah. the love she had over the sister could override the hate that she felt for this man or, or, or at least for what he represented. Mm. Um, so I, I felt that perhaps also coming through uh, the, the beauty of the human spirit. And also, I don't know if I could call it forgiveness to a certain extent, but maybe just some kind of reconciliation for her internally with yeah. whoever that represented, you know, the, the, the community that had, she had the relationship with. Mm. So um, yeah, that that's at least how I tried to rationalize Agreed. why she went ahead la, and, and put herself through that mm. Mm. Uh, because it was continuously you know bringing her back, sucking her back into that same you know that world she's trying to get mm. right? um, Yeah. What what I I also felt that what I felt at least when that my misgivings was when I read till the end the first time around I realized that. Aritomo always had the upper hand because he knew where the internment camp was and, and he tattooed it on her back. It was only decades later after he's gone missing when the professor comes to kind of study the tattoo and then study various prints of Aritomo and she shows her tattoo. He says basically it has the... the, the, uh, the he left clues on her tattoo on her back to show where the uh, internment camp was meaning he he knew where it was so only few people knew where it was right and those people who knew were part of the inner circle if you like of the emperor so he always had the upper hand so that sense of how how yeah. would you feel Power. How would you feel? You know, that position of uh, power. Yeah, how would you feel as a reader? How would you feel if your enemy was was always having an upper hand over you even afterwards, even, even after the war is, is, is you know, um, lost and, and all that? But yeah, but a good point. Thank you for asking that, uh, Salim. Um, finally, uh, Elia. Elia or Lisa, either one. Do you all want to share screen and show us what you have uh, done? Yeah. And, um, then, uh, and then later upload. Okay. Um, okay, I'll share my screen. Please. Okay. Can you see my screen? It's coming up. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so for my take, um, my thesis statement is the depictions of Nisha's aesthetics in terms of the images and the places, and also the portrayals of a multicultural country in regards to the ethnicity, religion, and language. Okay, so for the imagery, uh, when Yan Ling described her experience in Cameron Highland to give a, a child like pleasure that I could have a fire on cold evenings, and forgetting that she was in a tropical country is something that I could relate to. <laughs> when I went to Cameron Highland as a child uh, because uh, due to the difference in um, weather and also um, the whole ambience, even though Cameron Highland is just like three hours away from my house. So there is, there is an imagery that I could personally relate to as a Malaysian. Mm -hmm. And also um, when, uh, when uh, one of Aritomo's woodblock prints is described to have the painting of a Rafflesia, a picture plant, a mouse deer, and a tapir. Um, so that that brings me back to um, the Malaysia Truly Asia tourism uh, tourism advertisements. Mm -hmm. uh, they always have like at least at least Rafflesia. Yeah, so um, that is something that yeah, depicts one of the Malaysia's elements. Uh, okay, and then I talk about how Malaysia's identity to be multi-ethnic, multi-religious, and multi-linguistic. Um, 
uh, uh, when Yan Ling and Frederick were described to when uh, to go to the market, they passed by old Malay women squatting beside earthenware pots of curry while the Chinese and Indian housewives gossiping in the middle of the market, blocking the path. Uh, that is like a normal scenario that you can easily see in um, money markets in Malaysia. Uh, and also, of course, the diversity in terms of ethnicity attached to names, um, uh, uh, through the names of the characters mentioned throughout the novel, which is Achong, uh, Rizal, Vimalachi. Uh, and then uh, just like how uh, what Amy said about um, the, the, the depiction of Emily, a Chinese woman, to cook a mixture of Chinese, Malay and Indian dishes also signifies a sense of commonality in Malaysia where the cuisines usually unite the people regardless of races or ethnicity. Uh, and then of course, um, with different cultures comes different religions. Um, mm. There is depiction of uh, the Taoism, religion, Buddhism, Islam, uh, and also, of course, the language, um, the, the modification of the English language to fit into the multilingual context of Malaysia is also being portrayed in the novel. Um, this can be viewed from the portrayal of the suffix la, hor, joy, wa. And also another part that stood out to me um, was when... Um, Yan Ling decided to not change her name while studying in England in order to make it easier for anyone. Uh, I feel like it can be implied to to be an act of preserving a sense of nationality in a foreign country because I feel like, um, like I said here, it can be said that one's nationality is a part of one's identity. And as previously stated, names can be also attached to one's nationality and ethnicity. So there is an interrelation between the subject of names, nationality, and identity. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think that is one of the many portrayals of how it feels like to be a Malaysian. Um, and also it depicts how Malaysia as a country, where um, even a non-citizen like Salim will be, able, will be able to imagine and experience a life of being a Malaysian, uh, imagine through the depictions of its culture throughout mm. the novel. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Very comprehensive. Uh, please upload it. All right. Okay. Uh, and finally, Lisa. Um, actually, I didn't uh, share screen because I wrote it uh, down. But uh, it's basically the same as what everyone said. The gist is uh, when Tan Tuan King is writing, it's very interesting because I see why he's compared after reading very much to Dash O. They kind of have like a similar, I don't know, vibe to them, I guess. And they, I think they won uh, the same awards just in different years, right? So yeah, when, when I read him, I kind of see like shadows of Dash O as well. But as he was describing uh, Cameron Highland, I felt like I was breathing Cameron Highland, so it felt very Malaysian to me. But I not what like the most I think out of everything, the most interesting aspect of the book because I'm studying food, I I I, I actually enjoyed how food was described in the novel. It was very Malaysian, very multi ethnic, right? So I I I looked it up. I uh, I found it. That's actually a restaurant. A uh, restaurant, Au, Au Jardin. Yeah, it was a, a restaurant where the meal served that is inspired by Taiwan Ings, the Garden of Evening Mist, if you know the place. Yeah, so uh, they serve like cocktails there. I don't I don't think it's halal because they have also the cocktails that uh, where it said that uh, it said uh, that uh, um, I would say that the where people eat. Lah. And I there's okay, I, I'll share the link. Lisa, I think I, I saw the website that you mentioned. It's a very interesting website. Because <laughs> I think it's interesting. Uh, the food there looks great, actually. <laughs> Better than the Tourist Malaysia uh, website, I'm sure. <laughs> Good one. Very, very much. Like the, the, the fall in love, Nari, no more. It's a drink. Interesting. Very interesting. So high end. <laughs> but I probably couldn't afford to go there, but yeah. Yeah, I'll probably be hungry even after paying all that amount of money, because they look the portions look so tiny. <laughs> okay. Uh, what else did you did you want to say something else? Um, 
Uh, no, I think everything that I want to say has been covered in terms of uh, the ethnicity, the places. Yeah, basically, I have the same opinion as Ilya and Jaira. Uh, all right, Salim, thank you very much. Please watch the recording. Um, uh, but Lisa, please do um, a write up and upload it uh, on the task. Um, Lisa, please do upload the e-task uh, on, on uh, our Google Classroom, yeah? Okay, so uh, thank you so much, everyone, for the e-task 5. Um, Dr. Ryan, so if, sorry, yes. if I could just add a little bit in terms of the multicultural please. makeup, right? Can. Uh, something that just stood out to me as well is um, one of the things mentioned about the Caucasian community. Mm. Um, though especially you know um when i think uh she reminisces about you know how um what, what's his name uh, uh friedrich magnus, Uncle magnus. Right. Yeah. Uh, magnus uh liked her mom right and, mm. but he was not good enough for mm. uh, because i think traditionally in any kind of colonial writings in post-colonial writings uh the white person uh, usually is seen as having higher status. And I think here um, brings an interesting perspective of how uh, this well-to-do Chinese family from Penang uh, does not see him good enough. You know, like they don't want him to, uh, the daughter to be married to this random, I don't know, poor plantation white man. And that just struck, you know, it's like, oh, okay, uh, you don't see these kinds of narratives very often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where an Asian is considered to be, you know, or the, the Caucasian man is considered to be less, uh, not, not, not good enough, you know, mm -hmm. um, because it's usually the other way around. Kind of, we see in, um, in like, in, uh, Victor's Last Wish, um, right. yeah, it's always the rejection comes from the other side. So, mm -hmm. I, yeah, that, that's just interesting the way they place the mm. those individuals and their struggles too, you know, uh, very they, they, they come across as very real people, uh, mm. not not as the privileged, rich, higher class. I mean, although they have a certain privilege amongst the other coolies and all that, but at the same time, the way in which they come across to the reader, so I feel makes them just like they're also struggling they're here right. you know it doesn't look like you know it's easy for them they, they mm -hmm. also were under attack you know so those things i felt like okay you know even that time it must be difficult in fact being a white man would be even more threat you know um they are more a threat at that time mm -hmm. perhaps. Mm -hmm. so those those struggles of uh, their realities also came came true i think he, he paid enough attention to that so mm -hmm. yeah in that landscape, in that era, you you, right. you see that they're all just trying to make a living, all trying to survive. Right. Right. No, no matter where you're from yeah. and what's your background. Right. Yeah. Even Aritomo. Yes. Um, yes. So yeah, mm -hmm. he yeah. painted that, that multicultural existence. Mm. You know, um, very mm. very uh, nice. I, I like you know because I, I completely did not see that as a as a issue when I was reading the story, but I like the fact that there is so much for everyone in this novel. Everybody can have their own take, be it a foreign reader like Salim or even locals ourselves. You know, everybody has their own take of what it is that you take away as Malaysia or Malaysian in this narrative by Tan Tuan Ng. You know. So, so I think that that was that was a really good discussion. Thank you so much, everybody. One more thing before we conclude. Um, I know we have one more week. And Dr. Mel, do you want to remind them when the lecture is and what time? Uh, yes, yes, everyone. Uh, Lisa has kindly agreed to do a little poster, so I'll also just send that uh, once it's done. Um, so it is next Monday, which is the 20th of January, uh, 1 o'clock. So um, I will send you the link as well. It is our Malaysia in narration class ring. Dr. Rai, I will put you in the... Technically, Dr. Ravi is the organizer. Lah. Okay. okay. But you. Salim, please remember it's one o'clock. Salim is not here. Uh, oh, I uh, thought I saw still... Is, is he still... No, he's left, right? Oh, he's still here. Oh, yeah, it's, it's at one o'clock. So, so we need to... 1 p.m. Sure next week. We come in slightly before one. 
So do we... Next week, doctor? Next one o'clock next week, not Monday. two o'clock class. Class Monday. starts at Monday. one o'clock next week. Okay, doctor. Okay, doctor. Yeah. Got it. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, so one, one, one to two, uh, if you want to just have a look at Asmi Hussein's Facebook uh, or social media pages to just familiarize yourself, yourself with his brand of uh, creative works, you can. Um, otherwise, you know, I, as usual, um, I would like to encourage maybe ask some questions. Yes. Uh, because the undergraduate class is very passive. The one or two, but generally you, uh, they are rather passive. So uh, that's the only way, lah, I guess. You know, okay. So do engage everybody as, as you have been uh, the last, uh, the last eight, nine weeks, you know, you've been brilliant. So do engage with the guest lecturer um, on um, Monday next week. It starts at one, it's one to two. So before, before we conclude today's session, I just want to remind you. Um, so that is week 10, right? We're looking at uh, emerging narratives of MLE, which Dr. Mel has already given us a lecture to. Uh, so this time we're looking at uh, documentary and film. Uh, we're looking at a, this is a workshop. Dr. Mel, if it's a workshop, would there be tasks for them? How, how would that work? Uh, no, uh, Dr. Right. Remember, this is the workshop that was had last week. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Today. So this one is on? It's a talk on Malaysian short film? Ah, this was the one that we couldn't do now for our class because it oh so what will we be doing happen. next week sorry so week next week is week 10 right so yes. we, we we will have the um apani discussion on uh, it was supposed to be my my lecture uh -huh. as well uh, but i brought forward my lecture earlier so, yes 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 um, so next week we have a guest lecture right which is on monday yeah. So, uh, so what? Who will be? Um, sorry. What would the topic be on? Also, okay. The topic is on multiculturalism. Okay, depictions of and 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 symbols uh, and characters in his works. So specifically, looking at the the writer's depiction of Malaysian identities and culture in uh, his book, The Tanjung Life, uh, from his perspective. So then we can discuss He's the cartoonist, right? Cartoonist, yes. So the topic, let me share with you. Uh, this is it. Yeah, guys, if you want, you can even save it here. I I will I will um um upload this version. So it will be popular culture and MLE, uh, looking at cartoonist mm. perspective of multiculturalism in Malaysia. Mm. So that will be, everybody, that will be for one hour, one to two. I will just have another hour after that, two to three next week. And in that hour, I want everyone to tell me what your final project will be about. In like, in a couple of sentences, okay? I want you to start thinking about your final project. Um, and because that's the final assignment you've done with the e-task. Hopefully by the end of this week, you would have uploaded all the e-task. Um, assignment two and assignment three is connected. Uh, so assignment two, I've changed the week. I've changed it to assignment two, it's due week 14. And is uh, it 14? Yeah. Week 14. Assignment 2 uh, and assignment 3 is connected. Okay. Assignment 2 is a, an abstract, a 250 to 300 word abstract on this, this final project. Okay. So your final project is, uh, this is the, the description, Malaysian literature in English has a significant place in the social and cultural tapestry of the nation along with historical sociological literatures. In addition, author-defined social reality continues to inform how Malaysian writers 
represent the nation over 60 years. <clears throat> Discuss these statements with reference to any Malaysian literary work. Uh, you may choose from Malaysian short stories, poems, novels, plays or dramas. And this presentation, the final project, will be in the form of a, an essay, 15 to 20 page essay. You must include critical references, at least 10. Usually it will be you know, 12 to 15 references and five of which must be current, you know, last maybe five to seven years. So for those of you who have been working on this area, particularly for video essay, uh, and you've already started to work on a particular topic, that element, that aspect of video essay can be part of this final project. Like Aimee, you were saying, you know, you were interested in uh, gender, uh, and you are going to relook at some aspect for your e task. You can also do that for this final assignment if you are interested in the same topic, meaning gender. But you may look at it from a different perspective, another corpus, a different corpus, right? Or you may compare um, the return with um, another text. So, so elements of the literature review for this final project may come, not necessarily, may come either from the video essay or from any of the e-task. So work smart. I, I keep telling you all this. Don't try to over, you know, overburden yourself. Don't, don't start from scratch. If possible, look at the task that you have done previously, either the five e-task or even your video essay, and see how you can rework it, recycle some of the things you've done and strengthen it and then expand on this for your final uh, project. So uh, a quick recap, next week we will have the, um, the workshop from one to two and then we will have a five minutes break and then we will do one hour, one full hour of you informing me what your final project will be about. So it will be preparatory work of the final project. And we will also conclude uh, the course. We will also wrap up the course. Then week 11 onwards, it will be consultation. You have to sign up at least once in the three weeks, week 11, 12, and 13, to show me your progress of your um, final project. And uh, on the 17th of January, Week 14, the final week of semester on the 17th of January on Monday, inshallah, we will have the Young Scholars Graduate Seminar where you showcase your final project, right? Not a completed project, obviously, because it's still ongoing, but you will, you will show us um, maybe 20 minutes, right? Capture 20 minutes of your final project. Okay, any questions? Any questions? So basically after next week, it would be project-based learning, All right? So the, the project is yours. You may consult with me for your final project, um, but it, it doesn't have to be during class time. Your consultation can be you know, in the morning on a, on a Tuesday or a Wednesday or whatever. One uh, question. Tuesday, I've got class, I forgot. Mm, uh, about the corpus selection. Yeah. Say if I want to do uh, Che Husna, right? Yes. Uh, if it's short stories, how many uh, would be about like just right for the final project? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good question. Because um, uh, uh, Che Husna Azhari has written an anthology, so you may look at an anthology. And then if you want to rationalize your uh, selection, copper selection, you may say if you are interested in, for instance, if you are interested in looking at gender or you are interested uh, in looking at um, a particular issue, then you can rationalize and say in this anthology, Malo in Perspective, you will first uh, go through the selection and identify which stories contain this particular issue that you are interested in. Maybe the, in, the, the issue is representation of women. Then you will go through all them. And maybe out of all those stories, 
only a handful, maybe five or six stories have uh, women as their central character or even minor characters, right? So that's how you make the selection. So it's it's not uh, uh, it's not um, what's the word um, set in stone. No, it's not. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's not convenient um, selection. Uh, Meaning, oh, I've read uh, Ustaza Inaya and Maria, so I'm going to study that. That that's convenient. You know, okay. so you want to make your your copper selection a lot more objective. So you can say you begin by identifying the anthology from which the stories are, are rooted in, and then based on the anthology, uh, you have a particular theme that you are looking for. You you go through the entire corpus and you identify which stories contain the theme in question, and then those are the stories you will use. You know, so so like that, yeah. Okay, uh, another way of approaching this is saying uh, you will identify uh, um, maybe four or five stories by Prof. Usna, uh, that contains female as a main character because she also mentioned other stories uh, in her talk, if you remember, she mentioned other stories because she said, you know, she, she wishes people would not study Maria as much uh, besides Maria and Ustaza Inaya, she mentioned other stories as well. You know, so um, I can I can um, ask her permission if she would like to share with us some of the stories. That yeah, she because I just uh, I got a book. I just bought it last weekend. Um, the Rambutan Orchard is an mm. anthology as well. Yes. Like, so I'm gonna just take a look, and then they don't have the stories that we have read because I know she's like, why that again? So yeah, yeah, trying to explore other yeah. works. Yeah. So, so because at the at this level, you know, even the final project, even if you're not thinking of publishing the the final paper right now, you may want to work on them later. You know, after you've graduated, you know, um, I, like I told you, all, I did that with my own master's uh, essay. But years later, after I finished my master's, even after I've done with my PhD, I came back to my my essays um, and and up you know uh, rework them and and uh, improved on them you may find yourself in that same situation so that being the case when you choose the copper selection for your final project make it as if you are thinking of publishing it even if it takes you five years ten years doesn't matter so don't just take two s uh, two articles sorry two stories that that's not enough for a journal paper Right. So if you have an anthology like that, the Rambutan Orchard or Malo in perspective, that that would be good. That would be that would be a good way of uh, approaching it. Any other questions currently that you have uh, regarding your final project? I, I might have to refine my, um, you know, uh, my likings because I'm attracted to do so many things. Mm. Not so many things, but a few things that interest me. Yeah. So I uh, would it be okay for me to, you know, personally text you, doctor, and just, yeah. you know, kind of refine my, help, yeah. Help you refine. Okay. okay. One one rule of thumb, I would say, is this. Uh, uh, start a, a kind of a draft, okay? Do you have a thesis statement? Like for instance, maybe you're interested in three or four different things that you're you you want to pursue. Um, one thing to ask is, do I have a thesis statement? What is it that I want to explore about this corpus? That's the first thing. The second thing is, you may have a corpus, but you have no thesis statement, right? So that being the case, another thing to do is brainstorm from the corpus. What is it about this corpus that I want to study or I want to research on? That's the second, right? The third thing is how much work has been done. So a simple, like over the weekend, a simple Google search, right? For instance, you have got a corpus. You're not sure whether, whether there's anything done in this. So spend a weekend just going through all the things that people have said online about this work. And based on that, so what you're doing there is the literature review part. So you may either begin with, I know what I want to say about this book, right? Um, so that that's what you're interested in. So you've got that, you've got the corpus, you've got the thesis statement, you've got the corpus. So when you see me uh, for consultation, we're going to start working on methodology. 
So it's a lot easier, right? But if you have none of those, then it's going to be very, very challenging. So four weeks may be a long time, but if you don't have anything clear cut now, the next four weeks is going to go by so fast. And you before you know it, you have nothing to show for. You know what I mean? So, be, so that being the case, based on all those things that you are interested in, which is the one that ticks the all the boxes or at least two or the three boxes? Meaning you have a strong thesis statement, uh, you've got a good corpus, and you have uh, even begun looking at what others have said. And what others have said um, doesn't overlap with what you want to say, right? If you've got those three for any of those mini projects that you are thinking of, that's the one you should work on for this final project. The others you can always KIV. I, I always have, I always recommend my students to have a folder all your your future uh, research suggestions. Put them there. You never know when when they will come in handy. Yeah. Okay. Hope hope that helps. So you have this week to kind of explore that. Any other questions? So next Monday. 2.10 to 3.10 is your time to share with me what your thoughts are for your final project, okay? As always, I will be spending a lot of time giving you consultation, more than the three hours um, per week that is scheduled for the for the timetable, right? So from, uh, from week, this is week 9, 10, week 11 onwards, I usually spend like sometimes three times more than the three hours scheduled for the for the um, week, right? But that is your self-directed learning time, which means I will help you with whatever that you are interested in. I will give you ideas and questions and point you in the right direction. But ultimately, it's your project. So it's a project-based learning where you get to develop something that you are interested in to the level where you may work out, you know, later you may want to work with somebody else. Say, for instance, you've got that and you may say to Dr. Anita, for instance, like, you know, Dr. Anita, I've got this draft. I worked with Dr. Rai for my assignment, but I would like to work with you for my, for, for a journal paper. Can I do that? Yeah. Do you understand? So I, this is just the platform. This, this course, this assignment is just a platform. Who you choose to work with finally for a journal paper is your choice. I, hence, I have exposed you to Dr. Shan, Prof. Ruzi, Dr. Anita, of course, Dr. Mel is here as well, right? And you have all these uh, these other uh, individuals you may choose to work with based on what they have showcased is their interest. So for the next four weeks, I will give you consultations for a final project, after which if you so choose to develop that into a journal paper, you may do that uh, with whoever you choose. All right, Ken. So that's my that's my uh, job as as the coordinator, as the lecturer of this course, to ensure that you get the right kind of coaching to help you develop a project that you are interested in. But how far that project uh, sees the fruition of uh, publication is ultimately your choice. All right. Any other questions? Dr. Mel, any any final thoughts? No, no. Thanks, Dr. Mel. Okay. So, yeah. Right? So, um, um, you know, if there's nothing else, uh, we can conclude the class here. So, thank you so much, Dr. Mel. Just Mel. a minute with you, Dr. Rai. Uh, just a few things. Ah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I will start recording. So, thank you, everybody. Uh, I will see you. Please be early. We have a guest.